Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Foster, and today I'm going to talk to you about what is a Raman spectrometer. Before I can answer this question, however, I have to answer a different question. What is the Raman effect? Well, the Raman effect was first discovered or postulated by C.V. Raman in 1928, but it wasn't until the invention of the laser in the 1960s that it could be explored in more detail. And it refers to the inelastic scattering of a photon. What does that actually mean? Well, if a molecule is struck by a photon, whereas most photons are scattered elastically, known as the Rayleigh effect, and that is with the same colour as the input light that struck them, some are scattered at a different frequency to the input light. If this is considered in the classical physics model, the molecule is imparted with energy that causes it to vibrate or rotate. And for each degree of freedom of vibration, a new photon is emitted at a specific frequency. So why is this important? Well, every molecule has its own unique set of frequencies, which can act as a fingerprint by which the molecule can be identified. This makes the technique of great interest to a variety of sectors. So let's look at this in more detail. In this animation, we can see laser light entering from the left to the right, striking this molecule, causing the molecule to vibrate. One degree of freedom is shown here with this symmetric vibration. Most of the photons are scattered elastically with the same colour. These are the Rayleigh photons shown across the whole image. But occasionally, a photon is scattered at a different frequency, a Raman photon shown here. These frequencies correspond to the mode of vibration being observed. In this particular molecule, there are at least two other modes of vibrations that could occur, an asymmetric vibration, or these two atoms could nod or rotate backwards and forwards here. Each molecule has its own unique set of vibrations and therefore a unique set of frequencies that can be used to identify it. So, what is a Raman spectrometer? Well, Raman spectrometer is simply an instrument that measures this Raman effect to identify a chemical or molecule. There are a range of different measurement techniques used today. Arguably the most common is backscatter Raman, shown here. Laser light is fired at a sample and the photons are measured from the same side from which the laser light entered. A technique which has gained popularity in recent years is spatially offset Raman. Here, photons are allowed to travel through the sample and the Raman photons are measured from a different point. This technique is very powerful as it allows you to see through transparent or translucent containers. This has been employed, for example, at airport security. Another common method is transmission Raman. In transmission Raman, the laser light is fired from one side and the Raman photons are measured from the opposite side of the sample after the photons have traveled through the sample. This gives you a complete bulk measurement of the sample, making it ideal for quality assurance applications. However, this TIG requires quite high attenue spectrometers to measure. Another method is surface enhanced Raman. This method is very popular within academic institutions. Here, gold or silver particles are deposited and the sample measured across them. This gives a great in the enhanced Raman signal, allowing for the individual molecules to be probed. However, it has thus far been limited in industrial applications because of the need to deposit these particles. There are a number of other methods for measuring Raman signals. These include time resolved Raman, resonant Raman, standoff Raman and confocal Raman, and many more do exist. So what does a Raman spectrum look like? Well, here we have the Raman spectra from a paracetamol tablet. And as you can see, it's very complex, corresponding to the complex nature of the molecule. As already mentioned, every molecule returns its own unique Raman response. Ramans are typically measured at lower energy to the input light, stokes, but they can be emitted with higher energy, anti-stokes. The main problem with Raman systems is the scattering process is weak, with cross-cross sections below 10 to the minus 30 centimetres per steradian. This is significantly lower from absorption techniques, for example, and this has limited market take-up. 
The strength of the Raman turn is directly proportional to the in inverse of the input laser light raised to the power of 4. Therefore, in principle, using shorter frequencies gives stronger returns. However, other effects occur when you measure, for example, at 532, such as fluorescence, which can contaminate the signal. The shape of the spectra is not a function of the input wavelength, but the properties of the molecule itself. And it is this that can be measured by a Raman spectrometer. The technique has become a viable tool for analysis in recent years as laser technology has matured and dramatically reduced in cost. The Raman process is weak and typically requires relatively high power lasers of greater than 50 milliwatts. So, what is a Raman spectrometer? Well, it is a device that measures the Raman spectra or the Raman response of a given sample, allowing you to identify or measure properties of its nature. Thank you for time to listening. If you wish to ask for more information about Raman spectrometers, please visit our website at www.is-instruments.com or email us with the details shown here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and please like it if you have so and visit our site also on Facebook.